All right, so this is Lucy uh, from 2014. It's directed by Luke Besson. Um, I decided to do this. I haven't done a bad movie review in a minute. And uh, it's on Netflix and it's leaving soon. So I was like, all right, let me get this over with. So I watched it yesterday. Uh, I'd only seen bits and pieces of it because I was working at the movie theater when it came out. So theater checks, I would see little bits and pieces. Um, and then I saw the ending because, you know, waiting to clean the theater afterward. And I remember thinking that it looked really dumb and that the ending looked horrible. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, okay. And I heard some bad things from people and, and things like that. But on Rotten Tomatoes and, and Metacritic, it's, it's in the 60s. So whatever. I don't know. I don't know how, because after watching the whole thing, finally, yesterday, um, I thought this was atrocious, like even worse than I thought it was was, was going to be, but we'll get into all of that. Our main character, Lucy, played by Scarlett Johansson, I believe she was in Taiwan, uh, she's a student, and she's dating this guy, Richard, and they're in front of a building, and Richard has a briefcase, and he's like, hey, I, um, I can't go give it to this guy, Mr. Jang, All right, it was given to me to give to this guy, Mr. Jang, uh, so I need you to do it. And, uh, you know, he's like, oh, this guy, me and this guy don't get along or something like that. I need you to bring it in there for me. And they argue for way too long about it. Uh, but then he handcuffs the, uh, the briefcase to um, her arm. So then she has to do it. And then Richard gets gunned down right in front of the building while she's in there. And she gets taken away. And so Mr. Jang, who turns out to be this Korean drug lord, um, he comes out. He's got blood on him from, I guess, beating somebody to death. He's got guys in suits. And it's a it's a really tense situation. You know, she obviously doesn't know what to do. There's a translator there that's uh, telling her to open the, the briefcase and things like that. Um, turns out it's this blue powder, this this drug that they're trying to um, they're, they're trying to sell. They're trying to smuggle. And so her and some other people, right? They cut open their stomachs and put those bags of the, the of drugs um, in there in them and um, so kind of uh, stitch it back up. And that's their way of trying to smuggle that drug. Uh, what was it called? I think I wrote it down. Uh, CPH4 <laughs> uh, into Europe. And so that's their, their whole plan. So some of the goons that are working for Mr. Jang, they end up slapping Lucy and, and I think one kicked her in the stomach. And so the bag of drugs inside of her um, breaks open. And so that drug gets all inside of her. And somehow it's able to change her to the point where she can use uh, more and more percentages of her brain. It starts off with 20, then 40, eventually by the end of the movie gets to 100. And so she's, she's dying from this. Somehow she's still alive. Um, she's dying from this. Um, so she's, I guess, trying to <laughs> get more to keep herself alive. And then also go after the people who put her in this situation in the first place. Like I said, I really didn't like this movie at all. And we'll get to that. But positives... I think it's shot okay. Visually, looks looks all right for the most part. Other than the effects, really don't look don't look good, and we'll probably talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, but it's it's well shot for the most part. I can give it that. Uh, the performances are probably as good as they can be with how terrible this material is. Uh, the the writing is bad. The dialogue is is horrible. Um, but I guess you know the actors are trying. And there was one scene that I thought was legitimately effective which was the scene where she gets brought to mr jang you know there's all kinds of horror stories of people going to you know uh, foreign countries and getting uh, involved with the wrong people getting picked up in sex trafficked or, or or killed or whatever's going on there so you know you kind of picture yourself being in a situation like this um where you're taken by these people you don't know what's going on you've kind of been put in a situation you can't deal with uh, with people that you can't even understand and that was legitimately tense. Uh, definitely the best scene of, of, of the entire movie. That being said, this is a messy piece of nonsense. It is so messy. So let's start off with this. So it is believed, this is based on you know, the, the idea that uh, human beings can only use 10% uh, of their brain. And I was watching this and I was thinking, isn't that a myth? <laughs> uh, but whatever. So after the movie was done, I, I looked it up. And uh, yes, this is a myth. Uh, actually, I looked around and saw that I guess some scientists even believe that we use 100% of our brain in a single day. So this is already based on something that is not scientifically backed up, but really based on 
you know, uh, I mean, it's sci-fi, but it's like really, you know, ridiculous stuff as, as we go forward and go on. But yet they are taking it so seriously and they are constantly going into these like, explanations and, and little speeches and things. So Morgan Freeman plays a character, Professor Norman, and he's an expert in the mind and things like that. Um, and the movie keeps cutting over to him and also <laughs> footage of, of animals and humans and things like that. Even animals having sex and things like that is, it, it feels unnecessary, but uh, it cuts over to him and he's giving this lecture about the mind and things like that. He's the one who breaks things down where it's like, hey, if you could use 20%, you can affect your own body. If you use 40%, you can affect other people's bodies and, and so on. And it's just, it's ridiculous. And then it gets to the point where somebody asks him a question about it. And of course it gets kind of like hand waved away. If we could access, let's say, 20% of our brain's capacity, this first stage would give us access to and control of our own body. Sir? Yes. Has it been proved scientifically? Well, for the moment, it's just hypothesis, I confess. It's ridiculous and all over the place, but for whatever reason, it's taking itself so dead serious. I mean, from the moment she gets the, um, you know, the, the powers or whatever, you get to see her taking down some dude with terrible editing. I had to watch it like three different times to really get an idea of what's going on. Uh, it's overly choppy. It's really bad. Um, she takes out these this other room of guys and then she gets shot. Apparently she can't feel pain. I mean, even from 20 percent, she seems like she's invincible. Um, uh, she calls her mom and she's saying a bunch of nonsense to her mom. She can remember the taste of her mom's breast milk and she remembers a cat that they had from when she was like one year old so she has like she has access to memories that she didn't have before and things like that i can feel my brain the deepest parts of my memory sweetie we have a bad connection i can't hear you so well what did you say about memory i remember the taste of your milk in my mouth the room, the liquid. Sweetie, what are you talking about? The dialogue is is awful, especially when they're explaining this kind of stuff and like the existential stuff as, as things go on and things like that. It's obnoxious. Um, but, you know, she, she just from 20%, she can, you know, kill these guys with ease. Uh, she can obviously, if she has control of her body, like they explained, um, she can read the villain's mind. She took down all those dudes with these and got to the villain, stabbed him in the hands, and then gave whatever explanation or speech or whatever she did to him. Uh, could have killed him, but chose not to, just so he can come back in the end. <laughs> um, uh, but she can read his mind by touching his head, right? Uh, she can control uh, TVs, phones, and things like that how I, I guess she can affect uh, I don't know the frequency or something. I don't know but she can uh, control TVs and things and that's how she ends up um, you know setting up this meeting with uh, Morgan Freeman's character she has uh, knowledge of m uh, medical things like uh, she killed the guy that was on that operating table so she, she could get the drugs out of her um, tells the surgeon like you weren't going to be able to reach the tumor it's like okay things that she does not know she can she understands languages and can translate them uh, languages she's never learned and it's like really this is just from being able to tap into 10 percent more of your brain you can do all this and it just gets crazier and crazier and there's no tension at all from that point when she goes into any room with anybody and just guns them down or has no issue even later on she's able to move them around I guess with their mind and things and throw them up in the air throw their guns up in the air it's like so what's the what's the point there's no there's no tension I guess maybe superficially you can think that's cool but that's about it uh it's really just her going from one place to the next place to the next place being able to do more and more things and like explanations of things are happening like the drug what was it again cph4 or something they gave kind of an explanation of that where it, it's it's like a naturally occurring thing in a pregnant woman and it's supposed to like help the baby develop the fetus develop inside of the mother and they're trying to like they made a synthetic version of it <laughs> it's just it's just it's nonsense it really is just ex explaining and explain, explaining explaining so, like crazy i'm like what is happening and then it gets to the point where 
you know, she's she's on a plane and she makes somebody's uh, either she knew the person's nose was gonna bleed because she seems to be able to like tell things just from looking at people like she did with a roommate. She could tell her roommate's liver was failing her or something like that. Something, whatever. Um, she's on a, a plane. She's typing on multiple computers. You can't even tell what's going on on her screens. Um, she tells the, I think it was the flight attendant, oh, you have a nose, you, you should wipe your nose. Either she knew that was going to happen or she made the person's nose bleed because she can affect other people's bodies at that point. I don't know. I don't remember at what point each percentage is, is at. It, it doesn't really matter too much. But she starts to split apart because she's, um, I guess that's the way that she's going to die from this stuff. And so she runs to the bathroom and everything. She's still splitting apart and she takes more of that drug and she just disappears. And then she just reappears in a hospital. Um, <laughs> her hair's blonde again because she changed her hair because she can do that. She can affect her biology to the point where she can change her hair <laughs> um, at will. Um, but she just wakes up in the hospital and I'm like, of all the explaining you've been doing, you're not going to explain how that happened? Why she's just there now, <laughs> normal again? Uh, I, I get that the drug, I guess, it keeps her alive, but she disappeared. Like, what happened? It doesn't matter. Scarlett Johansson is trying in this, but, like, she, the character, because she's, like, all-knowing and kind of, like, I guess, godlike, um, she loses all emotion, right? There's a point where she kisses that French cop for no reason. There's no chemistry there. <laughs> um, she never shows, like, fear or anything like that. I guess she feels... Th th those are human concepts that she's above now or something like that but it doesn't help the performance especially with the bad dialogue and it doesn't help us care about the character i mean there's no tension with anything going on right it's like okay what does she try to do what she want to do i barely know this character you barely developed her even before things even happened um it just starts off with her talking about arguing with richard about going into that building so you know you can't really you know get in, in, um, invested in her you can't really get engaged with what she's trying to do She's trying to find those other people that got the drugs put in them. Uh, they got sent around or whatever. Uh, and, you know, you're like, okay, well, this is damn near a superhero movie now. Is she trying to save those people from a similar fate? No, she just wants the drugs <laughs> so she can, I guess, keep herself alive. But she's dying and she doesn't seem to have much of a motivation, right? Going after the people that did this to her, she did that pretty much immediately, right? She left that guy alive for no reason after she just killed all his dudes. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it, it's like what the hell you know she's you know in this she's in a car causing a bunch of accidents at one point i forgot she was trying to get somewhere um you know she seems to know everything but i guess she doesn't know how to weave in and out of traffic without causing chaos all right let's just <laughs> you know eventually her thing becomes i guess she's gonna pass on her knowledge to the scientists that's why she's you know going to see morgan freeman and some other scientists and things um and you know get got more explaining about matter and existence is time and more nonsense film a car speeding down a road speed up the image infinitely and the car disappears so what proof do we have of its existence time gives legitimacy to its existence time is the only true unit of measure it gives proof to the existence of matter Without time, we don't exist. At that point, they're putting more drugs in her. She's sitting in a chair. Some black goo comes out that doesn't look good. Like I said, the effects aren't good. Like the like when you see the inside of her stomach and the blue stuff is going all around, right? <laughs> it's just it's like a, it's like the origin movie of like a like an old superhero movie, right? It's like when you uh, in uh, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies where you see the right after he gets bit and he's going to sleep or whatever, you see the DNA and it's swirling around with red and blue. It's almost like that. It's almost like an old superhero movie or something. <laughs> um, it's nonsense. But, you know, she's doing the blue goo or whatever. Morgan Freeman, I guess, says, like, hey, you can pass on your knowledge. She sits in a chair and then, you know, there's a firefight and stuff going on. It doesn't matter. Uh, with the villain that she could have killed way earlier. And um, <laughs> I guess she's affecting the computers with that black goo the room gets all white as she's getting more and more access to her brain. And then she's time traveling, but it's inconsistent time traveling because it seems like people can't see her early on, but then she's in front of some Native Americans and they're looking right at her. There's this bad CGI dinosaur that looks at her and like goes to attack her before she disappears. And then she touches fingers with like, a, 
I guess it's supposed to be a Neanderthal or something or a monkey or whatever it is at the end. Um, and she touches fingers with it and things like that. It looks that looks bad too. But uh, after that, she disappears, and the, she uh, somehow she created like a drive with I guess the information in it, and you know she texts them because she disappeared. You know she texts the the French police officer. She's like, I'm everywhere. And it's like, okay, is she God or something? Has she always been God or something? I think at one point she saw the Big Bang and stuff like that when she was time traveling. I don't know. It was just, what are you trying to say with this? The existential stuff is just so forced and it's just kind of annoying because of how dumb the movie is. It feels like it's so much smarter than it is and it's just, it's not. <laughs> it's a dumb sci-fi movie. But, you know, this this whole thing where it's like, we were given life. What have we done with it? And it's like, well, what are you trying to say with that? Nothing. At the end, she's like, uh, you know, um, we were given life. Now now you know what to do with it. Based on whatever nonsense you were saying that's now in a fucking a drive. Okay, well, what is that supposed to mean? It uh, doesn't, doesn't matter because we go to credits after that. Uh, I'm giving it complete shit. I, I think it's damn near worthless, right? Like, really, the main scene that I liked, which was um, when she gets taken by Mr. Jang and them. Because yeah, I thought that was a really well done tense scene, and uh, Scarlett Johansson played it really well. It, that's way early on in the movie, and it's just it's all downhill from there. Like li literally, right, pretty much from there. I was like, what? The bad editing when she first took down that guy, that horrible phone call she had with her mom. Uh, from then, it's just it's 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 just bad, man. I mean, the, she could do so much from like twenty eight percent. Why are we still here waiting for a <laughs> hundred? I was like. I don't know. You've already made a superhero movie at 20%. Anyway, that's it. Complete shit. I did not like it at all. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's Lucy. And uh, we're done.